Hello everyone, welcome to this Rocking Data Science video. I have here a linear regression project, which goal is to build a model to predict house prices. In this well-known dataset from Kaggle, feel free to go to the link in the description and download it. You can also find this notebook at the Rocking Data Science GitHub. Our goal is to go through this dataset, clean the data and build a linear regression model. Along the way, I will explain a few details related with the linear regression project and some problems that you might face it. So, let's start! This dataset contains information from houses in the 90s and you have here the explanation of each feature inside the dataset. So here let's import some useful libraries for our projects with the basics such as pandas and numpy and then some from scikit-learn for processing data, evaluation metrics and matplotlib and seaborn to data visualization. So the first step in our project will be obviously importing our data and we'll import the, our CSV and take a look at the shape. We have more than 20,000 entries and 10 features. And we can see here the heads of our dataset. If we take a look at our dataset info, we can see that all values are float except the last one, which is categorical. And we have here some null values, which will be taken care of it. Okay, now let's use describe to see the data that we have here. So we don't have negative minimum values, which is okay, great and okay. So let's count our categorical variable. We only have five island. So it's not very significant, but okay. So now we can start by cleaning our data and preparing our data. The first step will be filling the null values. As we already saw, we have some null values in total bedrooms feature. And as machine learning models can process missing data, we need to take care of it. In this case, let's fill the NA values with the median. And now it's time to take care of the categorical values. So categorical values are a special feature to take care in this type of models. Here we'll be using one hot encoding. As the most machine learning models works with numbers, which is our case with the linear regression, we need to transform text into numbers. And sometimes it is useful to transform text to different categories, uh, such like imagine that we have bad, neutral or good, we need to transform it into one, two or three. And for that case, we need to use ordinal encoder, which is available from scikit-learn. But in your case, that doesn't apply since that these categorical values doesn't represent a scale and we don't want that our model understand it as a scale. So we will apply one hot encoding which creates a binary attribute for each category. So if that category is true, it will be filled with one. If not true, it will be filled as zero. And to do that, let's select our categories from the dataset and declare the one hot encoder and fit transform the encoder into that data. Now we can transform that data to an empire array and if you use encoder categories we can get the list of categories in your data so and these are the categories that we have and we already saw and now we will transform it into a data set using the the columns from encoder dot categories and here is our data frame and this is one hot encoding. So we will transform our categories into columns. And for each category, if it's true, we'll have one. For the other ones, we'll have zero. 
And now the next step is concatenate our dataset with the encoder df and we'll be dropping our categorical feature, ocean proximity. And as you can see, here is our new dataset. Okay, now one useful thing that we already saw using the describe is checking that if we have negative values in median house value, this is like um, checking the coherence of our data. You can do this for other columns also, that doesn't make sense having negative values. And now comes the part that we will be analyzing our outliers. Outliers are important to analyze since they can negatively affect our model. So let's build subplots seven by one and visualize the seven features at once. And here are our box plot for each feature. We can see that we have a lot of values that can be considered outliers in our features and these might not be good for our model. One of the ways to take care of outliers is to drop them. And let's apply a way to drop these outliers. We can drop outliers using several methods, such as z-score and uh, interquartile range. But z-score standardization is very sensitive to the presence of outliers, since it uses the mean and the standard deviation in its formula. As the presence of outliers will influence the mean and the standard deviation, they consequently will influence the outcomes or the results of this standardization method. And for that reason, uh, I'll be using the interquartile range and I will leave a good explanation how this method can detect uh, outliers in the description. And to do that, we'll need to declare the first quartile and the third quartile of our median house value and calculate the interquartile range by writing quartile 3 minus quartile 1. And what are we doing here is to left out any value outside of quartile 1 minus 1.5 multiplied by interquartile range and outside also of quartile 3 plus 1.5 multiplied by interquartile range. And we'll be doing this only to the median house value because the other ones have a lot of outliers and if you have uh, such a skewness in your distribution, you need to drop a lot of entries. And for that, we might do something like the logarithmic transformation, which can be done to improve our model. But so far, we only will be applying this to the median house value and let's see the shape and now we have a few less than 20,000 so we haven't dropped a huge number of entries. Now before going to the next stage let me just show you how can we plot uh, geographic data since we have longitude and latitude so we picked up the longitude here and the latitude here and gave it an alpha of 0.3 in order to be able to to see data points over data points so if you write the default which is 1 you'll have this and you can change this as you want so this is very useful to to watch these points okay moving to the next next step split data so it's very simple you may already know this, but in case you don't, let's divide our X and Y, where X will be your data set except our median house value, which we'll be predicting. And because of that, the Y will be the median house value only, our target variable. And after this, we can use the train test split, which we imported 
the beginning of the notebook and we'll use x, y and we'll have a test size of 0 0.2 so now to build our linear regression and train it, it's very simple we declare the linear regression and then we fit our x train and y train into it and now we can call the predict on x test so now that we already build and trained and predict using the linear regression model, it's now time to evaluate our model. And to do that, we can use, we can call the score between X test and Y test. And here we'll be calling the coefficient of determination because we are calling this score for a linear regression. And the R square is the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from the independent variables. It varies between 0 and 1 and in our case let's see we got 0 0.62 which is not a great number so we need to increase it. The bigger this number is the better our model is. Following the r squared we have the root mean squared error which is a frequently used measure of the difference between values predicted by the model and the values observed. So usually the lower this value is, the better. It is always non-negative and a value of zero means that is a perfect fit of the data and this 59,000 indicates that our model isn't great, so we are missing a lot in our predicted prices. So here we have a print with these values, here we can call also this way the R squared and we also got the mean square, square error and these are metrics that are useful to evaluate a regression, a linear regression model and next I have here the intercept and coefficients which is also good to take a look in order to know better your model. So let me print this. The intercept which is the constant that is often defined um, as the mean of the dependent variable when you set all the independent variables in your model to zero and the coefficients of each feature which measures the strength and the direction of the linear relationship between two variables and this is what we get in our model. Now we can plot our y test and y pred. We can see that there is a, a linear relationship between those points and the last plot that we have here is a useful plot to also take a look or a different perspective of our model. We can take a look at the skewness of our model and if we improve our model we will get a better bell shape which is close to or which is closer to a normal distribution and this just confirms that our model should be improved. Well this is how we can apply a linear regression model in order to predict house prices there are more things that can be done to improve the model or even test different algorithms to achieve that. So stay tuned because soon I'll be sharing with you a video where we'll be improving this model or also testing other models to improve our house price predictions. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and smashing the like button and see you around.